I fish new waters for the first time, I, I don't tend to do too much research into them. You, you hear all sorts, but I tend to like to turn up to a venue and just try my own thing first. I tend to just figure it out for myself, really. I try not to do too much info. I think half the fun of fishing new venues is, is figuring things out for yourself. Of course, you always listen to tips along the way, and you, I'll always listen to what other people have to say, without a doubt but I also make my own judgment and try my own things and will always start how I want to fish it first and, and react on what I see as opposed to just doing something because someone's told me that works. Pretty quickly I build up a picture in my mind areas that I probably want to be targeting. In terms of what features I actually fish to, I think depth is, is one of the key factors. Sometimes if you've got a lot of deep water and then you've got a shallow hump, that is absolutely nailed on for, for an area that, that carp will feed in. If you have got a lot of deep water, the shallow water around it, there's always going to be fish there and there's going to be feeding spots. But I think you've got to look at the shape of the lake as well and see where the least pressured areas are. So for instance, Bluebell Swan's got a, a really wide end that's 220 yards wide. And a lot of the fish are going to just reside out in that middle sort of that last 20, 40 yard gap in the middle of the lake, there's, there's always going to be fish in there and I've caught a lot of fish from that sort of area. I always prefer day tickets for big carp. Um, there's just something about them. I, I tend to like flitting between different lakes. Um, so syndicates, if, if you're on a syndicate, you tend to want to fish that particular lake and that doesn't really suit me. Sometimes if a lake's fishing quite slow, then I'll go to another lake and day ticket fishing really suits me because I can just turn up when I want, go to one lake. If it's not fishing, I can just pack up and go to another lake. Or if I hear here on the grapevine that a certain lake is fishing its head off, then I can just go down there and, and fish when I get my days off of work. So I, I, I have preferred day tickets for, for most of my fishing, most of my life. Fishing mainly day ticket waters, they're normally quite busy. So it's just a case of walking around and, and a lot of the time I have to slot in where I can but I'll always do at least a couple of laps of the lake, talk to a few people, watch the water, if I could see fish showing then obviously I'll try and get as close to them as possible but a lot of the time my Saturday nights are done researching, figuring out where the carp are, where they're feeding, um, seeing who's catching what, seeing where the fish are showing so that I'm ready to move on a Sunday to try and get on the fish. And even if I have to move two or three times over the course of a session, I'll do it if that's what I need to do. You've got to get in tune with the lake. You, you need to figure out what the fish are doing. I like getting bites. I don't tend to fish um, a lake unless I think I'm going to get quite a few bites. But I also have to have that big target fish at the end of it. So, yeah, I'm a big fish angler, but I also like to get bites, which is why spend most of my time fishing day ticket waters really because generally they're quite well stocked with a few sort of prize carp in there um, so yeah I, I, as long as it's got fish 40 pound plus in I'll fish it and as long as I think I can get a bite then I'll fish it. Instant big fish waters aren't for me I think um, there's there's a lot of venues coming out nowadays that have got lots of big foreign imports and, and it's all too easy really it, Carp fishing for me is about the challenge and about working hard and figuring figuring the carp's habits out and working long term towards a goal and catching them. I think big fish venue, just turning up to a venue that's just been filled with a lot of foreign imports, um, not definitely not one for me. In terms of how often I go fishing, um, I, I, can, I work five days a week in Hinders of Swindon, so obviously that takes up most of my time. I'm quite lucky to get Sundays and Mondays off, that's quite handy for my fishing. Um, I tend to go on a Saturday night after work till a Monday evening, so I get a busy Saturday on the lake, it's normally quite rammed, and Sunday and Monday is generally a bit quieter, so it kind of suits me. I try and fish sort of three times a month, in the winter probably a little bit less, and in the summer as well probably a bit less, but spring and autumn I try and get out at least three times a month. A lot of my big fish come from spots that I fished fairly regularly and put lots of bait in and kept, kept putting bait in to certain spots and then eventually when, when the fish start feeding on it and feeding on it regularly, the big fish tend to come a bit later on off of those spots. So you normally catch quite a few fish first and then eventually the big fish will come. The weather plays a huge part in fishing. Um, it doesn't dictate when I go fishing or if I go fishing at all. 
but I do study the weather. I can only go fishing when I can go fishing, but I do use the weather to my advantage. I'll always check it, always see what, what the forecast is doing and try and sort of figure out what sort of mood the carp are going to be in. Um, in my opinion, a low pressure coming through with strong winds is absolutely nailed on. Fish are going to be wellying out and more active. And it's on these occasions that I've had a lot of big hits. Nine times out of 10 on the end of the wind, and I will probably put even more bait in because I just get that feeling that it's gonna happen and I'm fishing for a big hit of fish as opposed to just fishing for one or two fish. You know, if you've got high pressure and sunny, warm weather in the summer, then I'm gonna look at that and think, I've, I cannot go fishing without my floater gear. I've got, so I do study the weather quite quite a bit on the build up to a session just to give me an idea of what's what I'm sort of in for for the session and what I need to prepare. In terms of targeting specific fish, yes, um, I do sort of, whenever I set up on a lake I, or for the first time, I have a look at what fish is in there. And I do like to sort of pick out a few fish, not always the biggest fish. Some, so it, a lot of the time it will be some of the best looking fish. Sometimes it might just happen to be the biggest fish. Um, but in terms of what kind of lake I would fish, I think it generally it would have to hold fish over 40 pound in for me for to really get that motivation to just keep me going to to put all that extra effort in knowing that there's a very big fish 40 pound plus in the lake it just that's just gives me the motivation to just go that extra mile current PB is a fish called Dave, funnily enough, um, from Bluebell Swan Lake. He, when I first fished Bluebells, it took me uh, a year and a half on and off. It, it's quite a trek for me. So I fished it, I think it 16 sessions before I finally caught it. And it was quite nice because I caught a lot of nice fish along the way. So and when I finally did catch it, it, there was a great sense of achievement because I'd put the effort in and I didn't just catch it straight away. I always prefer to catch it after a long campaign, catching lots of other fish. The last thing I want to do is turn up, first bite, Dave, done, job done, because A, I haven't really earned it, and, and B, you kind of then loot, may lose a bit of interest in the lake as opposed to there's so many other fish worth catching before. So it's kind of like the perfect campaign, really. Big fish baits. Um, Boilies play a part in that, but for me, it's not the be-all and end-all. Um, I think you do need to have a decent boilie in the mix, and I'm a great believer that, that it certainly makes a difference, but I'm a big, big particle person. Um, I very rarely ever just use just plain boilies. I always fish hemp with it in sweet corn, and it's a really simple mix, but the main bulk of it is hemp, sweet corn with a bit of boilie and I tend to stick to 10 millers for most of the time. Sometimes in the summer, if there's more bream about, I'll fish bigger baits. But for, for again, 90% of my fishing, it'll be sweet corn, hemp and, and 10 millers. Fish a fairly small hook bait, um, fish free on a spot, and all the items I'm putting in are small. So th there's a lot there for the fish to be sort of getting their mouths around really and, and sucking up. So all the everything I'm putting out is small. So there's a lot, physically a lot more to it and it just keeps them grubbing around for a lot longer, especially fishing tight on the spot. It, it must take them eight hours and keep them feeding for hours at times, sort of picking up all the little particles. And even when you get a couple of bites, there's still gonna be little remnants of small baits around. Whereas if you just had, say, I don't know, 50, 18 mil boilies out there, and once they've been picked up, there's nothing there. As opposed to with particles, there's always gonna be a few more sort of mooching around on the spot. Um, even on notoriously tricky venues, I've had double takes, sometimes triple takes, because it's the way they feed on it, it's, it they're competing for the food. So even if it, on lower stock venues, I've still had some very good action and big numbers of fish fishing particles. I take plenty of bait when I go fishing. Um, with the nature of the bait I use, I, I cook up a lot of fresh hemp, but I also keep lots of jarred hemp. So. Also with the sweet corn, I'll take frozen sweet corn, but I take loads of big catering tins as well. Boilie wise, again, I take my freezer baits to start with, and then I always carry some spare bags of shelf lives. So I take far more bait than I'm ever gonna need. And I always use the fresh stuff first, and I've always got backup. The last thing I want is to be suddenly turn up 
on a shed load of fish, catching loads and run out of bait. So I've always carry plenty. I keep things very, very simple. So in terms of rigs, I fish for, for the last three years, I've pretty much for 95% of my fishing fish diversion of the, the hinge stiff rig. And I generally fish all rods on that same rig and it works, it never lets me down and it's, it's presented really well. The only time I'll make a slight amendment is if, if I'm fishing and I can't find a clear spot, then I'll use a chod rig because it presents better over weed. But for 95% of my fishing, I'll be fishing a, a clearer spot and I'll be fishing a hinge diff rig. The components that I use are very, very strong. I've never, ever had a hook link break. I've never, never lost fish to, to, to rig tie and error ever on, on the hinge diff rig. Um, don't lose many to hook pulls, hardly ever. I can count on one hand in the last three years how many fish I have actually lost. So it's just a reliable rig. The way I fish it with, with a stiff boom and it, everything kicks out nice and straight is almost impossible to tangle. So I know that they're fishing 100% or 99% of the time.